All right. Hey, I guess we're done with the movie. Um, I got a page and a half of notes. Um, I guess we should talk about <laughs> I, it. What do you got? So I have, I wrote down Dog Wink, and yeah. that's it. <laughs> that's all that I wrote. Wait, hold on. <laughs> you wrote down, that's like 10 seconds in the film. What the fuck? <laughs> 10 seconds into the movie. How yeah, did you I, give up on the movie 10 seconds <laughs> in? <laughs> Cam. That's all it needed. Okay. Cam. I do not need. <laughs> I don't Come need, on. I don't need more than Dog Wink. To summarize this movie, because <laughs> nothing else matters in it, I will oh. absolutely remember the three minutes of plot point that happened in this movie. I don't need notes. I'm doing this raw, baby. This one's coming in raw. God damn it, man. No, no. It's, don't worry, it's fine. You can't blame me for not writing notes for this movie and not paying attention because the number of times <laughs> that I tried to say, hey, Boyks, look at what happened and got nothing back and I realized that you had walked away was more than three. So... Because <laughs> you had quietly gotten up and left many times during this movie. <laughs> You can't fucking bullshit me. <laughs> Welcome to Rough Cuts, everybody. <laughs> okay. So, about that dog wink. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I never thought... That dog wink is real good. They have it like three different times in the movie. It's, it's I, like a I never wink. thought a movie would and end on And that is friendship. Santa Stole Our Dog. That's the end of it. Bye. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. The dog's really cute. It's a Kai Ken. Did you know that Kai Ken are sacred in Japan, boys? Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> please, Cam, please. Please stop. <laughs> It's a rare breed that's generally only in Japan. I don't want to talk about this movie any more than you, but we have Did to. Did you know that they're often known for their, like, bristle yes, color just, coat? Just like the movie, I also read Wikipedia. I know. Please. <laughs> Jesus, fuck. <laughs> this... Did you fuck. know that they're also known as tiger dogs because they're known they're they're very sacred? Can, can we just... Um, they're, a, they're one of the six native breeds of Japan. Okay, can we collectively say one thing about this movie before we talk about it? Because I really don't want to talk about this movie, but here we are. The one thing I want to say is, fuck this movie. <laughs> fuck this movie. Fuck, fuck everyone in are... this movie. Fuck everybody who fuck made the music made for it. this movie. Yes. Fuck you. <laughs> Santa no. stole our dog? Fuck off. Did you know that Chu, the canine warrior from the 2006 video game Okami, is also a Kaiken? Great. I do, in fact, have the Wikipedia open now Great. because it's more interesting than this movie. Thank you. <laughs> uh, how do we, what do we even <sighs> talk about? Or should we, I guess we have to discuss what happens. We have to go through what happened but in the movie. The movie um, is like a standard adventure film, right? Like, thing happens, family well, goes on a road trip. Thing happens. I don't know that I'd call anything in this movie standard. Okay, it's it's less a movie and more an acid trip with a lot yes. of downtime. <laughs> there's, like, there's there are. But... Imagine if you were able. Okay, this is not an acid trip. I know what this is, and uh, this is definitely not a reflection on any personal life choices I have made that I know these kinds of things. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but this is. This is somebody deciding to smoke a little bit of salvia every 40 minutes. <laughs> so you have oh, like... Oh, that would do it. So there's an up and down. You have like 30 seconds of intense acid trip. And then suddenly it's just like 40 minutes of just staring at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what that is. It's somebody oh, stuck in a no. blank room, but with like a, a, way, a pipe and some salvia. And every once in a while when they get too bored, they just smoke a little. <laughs> and that's the movie... Yes, yeah. holy shit. You're not fucking Basically, wrong. Uh, what happens in the movie is they uh, Toy Dad, which is a trope that we are getting into now. Fuck these are toy all dad. like uh, Oh, and I want to get into this later. Remind me about yeah. this Toy Dad because this Toy Dad has a few particular spins on it that we found out at the end of the movie. So, yeah, I want to get into that later though because I want to just talk about what the movie actually does. Um, 
basically toy dad as an ex-wife like all toy dads do welcome to toy dad that's what they do this toy this toy dad is a little more interesting interesting because he's also cryptid dad um santa is in fact santa a cryptid. we established this. santa is a cryptid yeah, yeah santa's a cryptid so he's he's a little bit of the cop dog dad that we had early on in this podcast um where <laughs> he's the cryptid dad and so he believes in Santa really hard and has kept a cookie frozen in his freezer for 30 a years. A fucking nasty-ass wor- moldy cookie. Don't worry. That doesn't matter because nothing in this movie fucking follows a through but, line. But you it forgot about Detective Kid. Detective Kid's just like Cop yeah. Dog, too. This movie's just Cop Dog, but not at all because they threw no, the Cop Dog so shit out the door like 10 seconds in. They threw the dog out the door a little ways in. They threw the dog at out the movie. At first I was so excited. Jesus. God, I was so mad. I was so excited at first because they pick up this dog. So dad, dad has an ex-wife, and the ex-wife doesn't like dogs because, of course, ex-wives are all bitches, right? Yeah, it's um, all <laughs> I'm, I'm, women. I'll get into why this movie that's is a just thing in this movie. All mad about women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna get into that in a minute, like at the end of this. But um, so he's got his ex-wife. She's mad about him getting a dog for the kids for Christmas. And so then he has to keep the dog himself. But then when Santa comes, Santa the dog walks into his bag, and then the Santa because... takes him with him unsuspectingly. Yeah, and that's how Santa stole the dog. And that's basically the movie. <laughs> like that's it, because the rest of it is the kids traveling in a car to go to the North Pole to get the dog back from Santa. But here's the trick. This is the rub. Santa goes, how do we find the kids with the dog? And he sets up like, this part's actually kind of clever where they set up a thing where he does a news broadcast and they have it as like, oh, he's the news broadcaster and stuff and that kind of thing. And they like plant it into the news. hold on. You say clever. I think you mean fucking stupid. (laughs) Wait a second. Wait a second. If you you have to narrow it, you have to narrow it. If you have to narrow it down, they show the dog and they're like, oh, there's this dog that they saw that Santa took. Oh, weird. Like, at least that's a way that you could maybe have the person whose dog you took, you can find out where it came from, which is what they're trying to do. That's actually kind of an okay way to do it, where it's like, okay, the people would see their dog in the news and be like, that's our dog. And send them piece of okay, okay. At that point, it falls apart because yes, fucking it's Santa. fucking stupid. <laughs> but, gonna, okay, hold but, on, hold on. Does it? It wanna... falls apart more than that. It falls apart more than that because two <laughs> scenes later, the actual news comes to interview the small girl yeah. for for about how Santa stole her dog, and she tells the regular news that Santa stole her dog, and then Santa gets it in a paper, and he goes, "Oh no, this is terrible." I'll go return their dog. The movie's over, man. The movie's fucking yes. done. He's got their address. He knows who they are. All of it's over. We are 20 minutes into this fucking 90 minute movie. It's done. The okay. movie's fucking finished. Okay. There's no more plot. Yeah, we're fucking, okay. I want to put out, we we're just, done. We just finished this movie and we're a little mad. I, I might have. I'm so angry. I might have accidentally sent an email to one of the musical <laughs> artists for this Italy. film and told them to fuck off. <laughs> accidentally. I don't know. It just happened out of nowhere. Um, okay, a thing that you, I actually have a screenshot for proof <laughs> of. <laughs> yeah. okay, okay, hold on, hold on. We skipped like 30 minutes of film to describe the film, and at that point, we're like how how this movie's 94 minutes and, and it dawned on us we're like ah oh, fuck <laughs> how much longer can they make this how there's nothing they have the whole fucking plot and they kept going they just kept going they just kept doing how it. you do it is you stuff three people into a van for 60 minutes of film. Yes. that's how you do a, it. a van and an ihop and a denny's okay. yes <laughs> Um, well, we... and a police department. <laughs> oh my god! Because that's what that department. was. We need to. One There's... of the things that this movie does is the most egregiously is it uses green screen for absolutely green screen and CGI for absolutely everything. Yes. For budget stuff, and if you can imagine the most budget CGI and the most budget green screen, it barely scratches the surface of what this is. This is stock animations that are barely cut out to act to work around the green screen it is people sitting in front of a green screen 
but they're blue because they couldn't get the lighting right on a fucking closed set. No, with a they green couldn't screen. at all. The lighting is awful. The sound is awful. Uh, some yeah, of the shots like are effects. bad. Some of the shots like are good, the, but they didn't, they didn't take those shots. Those were those were B-roll. They found somewhere there's else. There's B-roll shots, yeah. There's B-roll shots that are okay. Um, like, you even said, though, for the sound, like, at one point, you had to pause and go back a couple times when we had to re-listen to yes. it, because Ed Asner, as Santa, is just like... Sh- it sounded so like he was slurring his speech and drunk or so something. And I'm like, what's happening? S's are really weird? Yeah, the S's like are, like, said, echoing like and distorted. S- they they fucked up the audio. It sounded almost like they slowed it down. It sounded like they slowed it down or something. Yeah. Like they ha- or they added an effect or something. It was kind of a dream sequence. This whole movie is a unquote. dream sequence. Did we watch a movie? <laughs> Did you and I just get really high, sit down on the couch, and then wrote a bunch of notes? Is that what happened? I when, think I don't well, know. I didn't write any notes. I didn't, I didn't, write, you any didn't notes. write shit because you were bitching I didn't out. Write shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. I listen, every every time that I have gotten high, it's been way more interesting than this movie. So there's no way. We can talk about the plot, but I think this is a film where it's better to talk about individual scenes because so much of the yes. movie is just fucking pointless. So I see, Yeah, I mean the, I see we, we did the plot. That was the plot of the yes, movie. The we plot can, of we the can movie keep is talking that about Santa that, returns their dog. Because there's other it. things like, that happen though, and they're they don't fucking mean anything, but they do no. in fact happen. Um, they put a bunch of extra plot lines in it. And we like, didn't, there's we the didn't even talk about the CGI. The CGI yeah. is fucking miserable. <laughs> it's, it is. That's the biggest part of it being an acid trip. Is that when like you go to the North Pole for the first time. And you have all the elves with the dog. And they're, uh, they're out this can, gigantic pizza. Okay, can I, the, can I talk about the pizza scene? I want to talk about the pizza yeah, scene. I'll let you do the pizza, yes, right, the pizza please, scene. Please, thank you. I want you to have the pizza scene. Go ahead, I gift it. <sighs> okay, so Santa stole the dog in Santa Stole Our Dog, yes. which is the name of the film and also what happens. After Santa stole the dog, it just cuts to, oh shit, we have a dog now. And then they put the dog in an elf suit. Put it in a circle with a bunch of children, Elvis, Waldo, and a CGI elf. And the, and, <laughs> and the tiny and the and tiny, the tiny uh, actress that the tiny elf that is a the, the tiny Maxim Swedish elf. model. Yeah, that he really yeah that he really really the director really wants to get with. Oh my basically. god! So, so tiny Maxim elf, Elvis, CGI elf, Waldo who so, has a newspaper Elvis? about. Oh, Elfis. Because it's Elfis. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Waldo I, with the I, CGI I, wallpaper. I, I that. Yeah, it's Waldo with the CGI wallpaper talking about global warming. And the dog are around a, a giant cheese pizza with us marshmallows and candy all over it, singing a Christmas tune with Alvin the Chipmunk noises as the dog teleports around the fucking workshop. Yes. And it's the fucking wildest 30 <laughs> seconds of just what? I've ever... And like just randomly every once in a while oh as they have God. them like screaming out incoherent Christmas carols yes. at the top of their lungs. There's no singing. Throwing cheese no, pizza and singing. candy around the room. No. And I do mean like throw, they're just throwing cheese pizza and candy yes. around the room. Like none of them are eating any of this. They're just like chucking it around. It's basically <laughs> a food fight. And while they're doing all this, like you said, the the dog is just, like, showing up in, like, a letter box, like a mailbox, <laughs> or, like, different things like that around the workshop in totally incongruous scenes. And every once in a while, every, like, fourth scene, they will just have this random CGI elf taking up yes, a full third of the screen. It's a full Dancing third. in front of everything. It's just a stock animation of it doing, like, this little dance. And it's... It's... I... I'm still this not, is where I, I really checked out. I still this was about know 15 if we minutes in, this. and I just. Did, I was done. Did we make this up? I was done. We might have made this up. What the fuck are they gonna do? Is is Santa gonna go to every family? Oh my god, the dog is. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's cute as shit. Oh, also, that pizza oh, looks Jesus, disgusting. That's, that is gross as hell. Oh, it's just a cheese pizza with candy on it. Is that elf? Ah! Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, Nightmare oh, fuel, what? Why would you do that to us <laughs> out of nowhere? What Why? is this, 27? Hold up, go back, go back, go back. There's more of it. Why is Elvis there? What go is back. happening? Go back, go what back. What just fucking
Did we did we do I... some edibles and nobody told me? What? Dude, I have edibles. They're not this good. <laughs> <laughs> this this was like the elves have a cocaine orgy okay. in the middle of this fucking a kid's <laughs> <storm. It's> just... <laughs> after, after the cocaine orgy huh. acid trip. Um, we'll get back to some other stuff that happens in the story and some characters that I actually want to discuss, but I want yeah. to talk about good old Ed Asner's casual Japanese racism for a second. Because <laughs> 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 it's real bad. Oh, it's bad. This isn't even Ed Asner acting. I'm sure this is just Ed Asner. and They ad-libbed it and just went with it. But so they're, Did they're you trying know to... that Kai Kenner, the <laughs> sacred dog of Japan. Yeah, weird. <laughs> weird how that came back up. So the dog, they find out the dog is a Japanese breed, and then Ed Asner's like, "I want you to go to every chimney in Japan and and see if they lost a dog. <laughs> yep. They have to have chimneys in Japan, right?" And then they send like two kids with Alvin the Chipmunk voices to a stage that has like paper lanterns. And fans, hand fans, yes. and fucking, like, pagodas, and a single cardboard chimney. And they're like, jingle bells, jingle bells, no lost dog here. <laughs> they're, like, breaking into every home in Japan that has a chimney to this extremely racist Japanese imagery. <laughs> Yeah, this this horrible car caricature of what Japan is, which oh. is just like, uh, someone has a Japanese flag, right? Yeah, uh, yeah okay, oh my that's... god. Well, and didn't they do the worst, okay, with that Japanese flag too? Yeah, They did the Rising Sun? They did. It's the World War II Japanese yeah. flag. Like, and then they did the, the whole they time. They did the Imperial Japanese no, flag. I have a theory about that. I have a fucking theory about that, Cam. So... <laughs> Is this an alternate universe where no. Imperial Japan has risen? Santa, Ed Asner is having World War II flashbacks about bombing <laughs> Japan. <laughs> he has the radar. He's I mean, talking about dropping right after their shit into their party, chimney. So. Like, he's half, that's what it is. It's Ed Asner. He's still fighting the war. Yes. <laughs> Ed Asner's still fighting the war. God this is it. all something he ad-libbed and they just shot scenes for it afterwards. It's fucking awful. I hate it. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. So after the casual racism <laughs> coke party, <laughs> which is a real thing, uh -huh. um, I, I guess they go to Denny's? This sounds normal. Yeah, well, they... A high op? They, they say that they're gonna go and... Um, there's a lot of scenes early on of the kids being like, oh, we need to go to the North Pole and talk to Santa. Yeah. And just different things like that. There's like basically the like Doesn't one do kid I doesn't one kid mail it? a like, letter to the North Pole? Yes, it's basically them twiddling yeah. their thumbs, going like, Oh, should we do it? I don't know. Maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't. Like, it's them just kind of doing that. Like, imagine going to uh, your partner and going like or like a, a friend that you have for the evening going like hey like where do you want to eat tonight and you know how they do like the well there, like, there's a lot you know, of like, just wasteful we go to dialogue keg. yeah it's it's that it's that the movie like it's basically them just sitting there like well we should go to the north pole yeah i guess we'll go to the north pole all right well, yeah. um, I mean, but is Santa real? Yeah, maybe. Like, that's the scenes. The scenes are just like that. Like, it's, that's the It's a lot of you characters talking about what they should do instead of actually doing something. Yeah, and then eventually yeah. they go and do it anyways, so it was totally extraneous. Um, but yeah, she mails them lighter than the Can we talk Pole about point, her for a second? Is, yeah. Well, I want to talk about specifically that scene. Oh, that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so. She goes to mail the letter to the North Pole... And she's like, oh, like, Santa, you have our dog. Please give him back. And she goes to talk to the mailman, who is actually the director. Um, that, that's not his director... first time being a mailman in a movie, if you know, no. if you know what I'm saying. That's his... He's... Okay, so this is fucking director. <laughs> God, we and... have to do that aside, don't we? We've got yeah, to we have to. It's important. The, mailman. the, the, the director uh... inserts himself as a mailman into all of his movies, or at least the last five, according to Internet Movie Database. And he's always the mailman, always the mail carrier it's a well in every fucking fact. movie. That's his thing. That's his fetish. 
I'm not going to say anything Listen, about it, but he has a male fetish. It's a fetish. well-known fact that Hollywood people just really want to be mailmen. And <laughs> this guy just gets to live out the dream. He's just he's just showing do, it to do, the public. Do you think he gets off on smelling the envelopes? <laughs> Oh god, he there's a lot of stuff in here that seems fetish because like what the, there's the a there's definitely a shrinking that, fetish. That's one the hot Swedish model is always shrinking and enlarging, and that just yeah it felt fucking filthy every time they did it with <laughs> yeah. her. It felt I felt like I was watching some weird porn. I felt there was some weird shit going on with that man. But anyways, she's going to mail the letter with the weird <laughs> mailman guy, and the little girl goes to give him the letter, and he's like, oh, well, we don't normally send these to the North Pole anymore after Christmas, because obviously it's after Christmas, Santa's already sold the dog, and he's like, well, I'll try and find a way, and she goes, okay, well, thanks, can I see your pen? And he goes, oh, Oh, because sure. he has like, a pen, in, pen, his pen his pocket. out of his pocket, yeah, and, yeah. yeah, and he, he, he shows it to her. She's like, oh, cool. Grabs the pen. She goes, I got his pen! And she runs away and runs inside the house. She's... And that's the end of the scene! She's such a no little reason. shit. She's that's such a little shit. That is the only constant in this movie, is that girl is a fucking absolute shit to everybody. She's a bad bitch, and I love her. <laughs> She's just mean to everyone. Uh... Yeah. It's, it's such incredible nonsense. It doesn't make any sense that they have that scene in there like what was the purpose of that there's so many and there's so many scenes that are like that like they have a scene early on too where she goes like oh the dog needs his medication and she pulls out meds and feeds the dog and yeah. then runs away and that's it that is the scene yeah and i actually like that scene because it was just cute because the dog's really the, really cute and it movie, was one of the few scenes that had the dog at the beginning this movie but, had the most realistic dog adoption scene i've ever seen yes somehow where they go like yeah they go the dog has medication here's what it is uh, um you need to get him fixed like here's the fee i have a theory like, as to why by the way it's because this movie has no fucking imagination <laughs> they, they probably just got yeah. somebody from that vet clinic to read off what they normally do for yep. dog being adopted they have no imagination yeah. they just they just did it cold no they script. didn't have a vet they did have a vet clinic in the uh, thank you credits for this movie. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just went on set and then just... They got an actual veterinarian or something, do. or yeah, I yeah. 100%. Shot them from behind. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's an early on scene too that's also, I just have to mention for a brief moment, that gave us a, a horrifying glimpse into the alternate reality in which this world exists. <sighs> When they, the child hears Santa on the roof. And so she's like, wait, what was that? And she runs outside and Santa climbs up a ladder behind her up to the roof. Hold on. But there's no ladder. Yeah, there's no ladder. For some reason, they decided to grab it in green screen they, and green screen it out. They for green no screen reason. the ladder that he was climbing. But he's climbing. So they just have this guy climbing a nothingness up into the roof behind her. And it looks fucking wild. <laughs> like, it's so yeah, bad. It looks it's awful. So... We're, we have to stop it. We're like, wait, what's he climbing? What's happening? Why is he doing that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, 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 okay. So, family, minus the bitchy mom, because yes. reasons, um, are going to North Pole, Alaska. I'm, I have a theory. I think that she was smart enough to stay out of most of this film. Do you think she, she put her name in the credits? I don't know if she did. I didn't look. God, I hope that she shouldn't have. <laughs> Whoever did the <laughs> elf animation sentence. definitely didn't. God bless them. They knew better. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. All the other animators were. Yeah, well, all the we'll other animators to, like, I'm We'll proud. get to snowman animation oh, fuck, in a while. I forgot the <laughs> snowman. You... I don't want to remember that. <laughs> no. So anyways, they go in their car, right? Uh, they're in the yeah. car. They're driving across, uh, I guess, the Yukon in Canada. Sure. Yes. And they... Because dad is such a fucking idiot. He's a that fucking he thinks... moron. He is such a moron. There is a town called North Pole, Alaska. And so he thinks that that's the North Pole... And he's going to drive there and meet Santa. Yeah. That's what he thinks the North Pole is. He doesn't realize the Earth has fucking poles. He needs it explained to him 
by a 300-year-old elf that happens to be an IHOP server yeah. who comes that over hasn't, hasn't and blows yet. up a beach ball, but blows yes. up a beach ball and explains it. <laughs> I can't believe they use the beach ball fucking they globe. They use a beach ball. Oh my god. Globe. Okay, yeah. so, okay, they're, they're driving along. Literally nothing has fucking happened for like 15 minutes in the film, and they're still driving, and then they're driving, and then there's B-roll footage of them driving, and then they're driving. And it's late at night. Yeah, they have a few montages like, oh in my. here. And just... Yeah, I'm like, God, fucking something happened. Maybe uh, maybe Nothing. the dad will, like, hit a fucking deer or something. Oh, just my God, something. right? And then, and then as yes. soon as I say it, the exact second I fucking say that, a CGI reindeer appears on screen and they go, ah! <laughs> Swerving. I'm like, and they almost hit the fucking deer. I can't believe the dark magic that you wield. It's incredible. There was like 30 minutes of nothing. Nothing. And then you're fine. And then finally you're like, man, I wish that they just. He's like, how much would it be that they even just like suddenly hit a deer out of nowhere? And yeah. fucking right then, like you summoned it from the aether. I, like, I this might have. Being, I literally this is leading might have. credence to the fact that this is just a fever dream that we are sharing. <laughs> this is like a joint consciousness <laughs> fucked up acid trip that we had together. And I am <laughs> having trouble with it, my man. Oh, this is so fucking boring. Nothing is happening. This is <laughs> yeah, no, just, just a, a fucking waste of time. Six minutes of them driving. Jesus, fuck. We at least have the we dad saw. fall asleep at the wheel and hit a deer or something. Come on. <laughs> Wait. Oh my Stop god! It. Wait, what? Yes! yes! No! Yes! You did not fucking yes! call that! Yes! I'm a fucking legend! So, they, they miss the deer, but they go off the road. It, like, ruins their battery or something. They, yeah, they it jump wrecks start the battery it. in the car. I don't is... know how that makes sense, but they, I... they jump start the car, get it to the next town... Go to another fucking IHOP, and then, and then as they're in the IHOP, an elf, like you said, tells them about the North Pole, and their car gets broken into by a drug addict in Alaska dressed as Santa, and now yep. we have to go to the police station and file a police report. Yes, this happens <laughs> against yes. against the fucking Santa who's stealing shit from yeah. their car. They they put up a lineup and then they choose the guy who's the Santa. It's like, oh yeah, that that's just Kyle. You know the town kleptomaniac. He does this all the time. <laughs> like, I oh, should have known that it was him. What the that's fuck, what guys? <laughs> Come on. Five seconds later. Five seconds later, he's outside the dad, <laughs> and Kyle's there, the kleptomaniac yeah. Santa, and he goes. Thank you for not pressing charges. And the dad looks at him and goes, well, after the cops told me about how heroically you saved that family from the burning Christmas tree, yeah. I couldn't help but not do it. What, what? the fuck? When did this happen? Yeah, it's Why just, is this in this movie? It's just the next scene. And then and then after he that... Calls him the, the cops just say, oh, that's Kyle, the town kleptomaniac. No, Hard what cuts a him outside and him going, oh boy, yeah, you're the guy that saved these people. And it's like, Wait, what? Like, the, <laughs> why wouldn't you show the cops saying that? Or, like, some, some setup? Something? Like, why is this a plot point now? So, oh, the small I'm so girl... I'm mad at this I, movie! I'm, I am fucking mad at this movie. The, the girl walks into the road for no reason, and a car coming on the snowy, icy road uh, is moving towards her, and then drunk klepto Santa drug addict jumps out and saves her from the car... And then suddenly it's a bunch of, you know, face shots back and forth against a green screen about, oh no, I shouldn't oh, have gone down the street. Yes. And drunk Kyle's like, yeah, you shouldn't. You fucked up, kid. <laughs> oh yeah, he gets mad at her. She's like, yeah. I did something bad. And he's like, you bet you did. Don't you ever do that again. And he's like yelling say, at this little girl. Whoa. Oh my God. So, so Kyle somehow tricks the dad into letting him go with him. To the North Pole. To the North Pole. Well, okay, but this is what bothers me about this, okay? Yeah. So at the start of this scene, he goes, oh, well, I couldn't press charges against you after I heard how heroically you saved that family. Yeah. And then Kyle goes, well, will you let me come to the North Pole with you? Yes. And the dad goes, no, I'm kind of thing. And then he saves the daughter at so that they have an excuse to take him. Yeah. I guess. So then what the fuck is the point of the whole story about him being heroic with the, like, 
burns and the well, we the haven't fiery Christmas tree stuff. Well, no, but like, well, what's why would they have brought that up? Why is that? A I thing? don't know. I don't because know why it's important. But they him needed just saving to show the it daughter off. is fine enough, right? No, like, why wouldn't he just be you, like, hey, like, thanks for not letting me? You know why, why it was important. Know. They had a scene for it later. We'll, we'll get there. Well, but we'll get there. Yeah, it's okay. It's the, making something the reason, important later doesn't make it make no, sense now. No, it okay? doesn't. It doesn't need to make sense. They just had an actor with the condition that they wanted to show on screen, and it's they fucking gross. To, no, 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 no. It's word, gross. Word that properly. Word that properly. They had an actor with the condition they wanted to exploit. Yes. <laughs> let's let's this put that one hundred percent. So Let's they, they stuffed the drug addict in the trunk. And then, oh, <laughs> and then they, they throw him in the trunk. <laughs> yeah. What did he in the, the trunk? And then he like creepily grabs at the kid to steal some food oh, from the back God. seat. And like, it's gross. He's reaching to get chips um, from the little girl so, in the back seat and his hands like all uh, over her as he's trying to grab the gross. chips. It's I, I hate it's it. Just, no. So uh, they, they drive towards the North Pole and then are stopped by a Russian agent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who's like, hello, you are in Russia. No, I, I mean, am... you're skipping ahead a bit because we... what happens is they actually, yeah, they go first through the U.S. border and then they meet, okay. that's when they meet the elf. They meet the elf after that, don't, don't they? Or no, uh... they have to go through a couple borders or did they just go through the Russian they border? Meet maybe the elf right. before. No, maybe you're right. No, they meet the elf before. They have the elf with them with his stupid fucking magnet. <laughs> yeah, that that apparently pulls them towards the North Pole because that's how magnets fucking work. Yes, and that Kyle had stolen, which is another excuse for them to have him along. I guess the kleptomaniac Santa. Uh, I don't know. This is a fever dream. I can't remember all of it. You can't expect me to remember all of this. The tiny well, elf is in their glove compartment at the same time. By the yeah. way, because the IHOP elf that they meet inside of the IHOP. Um, Books, you ever go to an IHOP and meet your elf server who's 300 years old, drop a tab of acid, and then just decide to go to the North Pole? <laughs> only, only that's sometimes. what this movie is. <laughs> only sometimes. Oh, something did happen because, at the. Actually, we should go back to that, that diner. Something happened yes, at the, the diner. VR goggles. Yes. There was. Oh, fuck the VR not goggles. Not the VR goggles, the reality goggles. Uh, they're not, they're not reality virtual reality. Go- they're reality reality goggles. I boys. hate it. <laughs> so, okay. You the can fucking, have this one. Go ahead. The fucking elf Explain. gives the Explain. dad a gift, which is the oh, cheapest, Explain. shittiest cell phone VR goggles you've ever seen. Well, the first, dad puts first them he on. Fucks with him though. Hold up. First oh yeah, because he, he gives him an empty box just to fuck he with him. He gives him an empty box, and then when he opens it, and he's like, "This box is empty." He's like, <laughs> "Well, you dumbass, you opened it wrong." And then he does like this weird yeah. secret knock, and it's like, "Well, how the fuck is he supposed to know? Don't be a dick, dude." <laughs> Like so, so he puts on the the reality goggles, oh. which is, I believe, a uh, symbolism for taking ecstasy, because because the dad is just know. sitting there groping at that's this that's air. Acid. That's acid. He, he's like groping at the air with the goggles on, playing a fake piano. As Ed Asner is in the room with him as a small child, telling him that he can go through time and is now talking to his past self so that his future self remembers to have a conversation with Ed Asner Santa and that he gave him a snowflake ornament, which never comes up at all. And it's fucking nope. weird. That never goes up again. They gave and him then the trip's ornament. over. <laughs> And then that's over, and then and then he goes. I don't really believe in Santa anymore. And then finally, yeah, he just later, gives up. Like, Actually, let's just go to the North Pole. Never mind. Yeah, like he. Okay, can you imagine some elf gives you magic goggles that sees lets you see your past self talking to Santa, and yeah. then you take the goggles off, and the elf shrinks down to sh- prove that he's an elf, shrinks down to like an inch high, and that's the point in the movie when this dad goes, Ah, fuck this! I don't believe in Santa anymore. What? what? It's over. <laughs> Let's go. That's when he decides that he doesn't believe anymore. Is that point? Before this, he's like, "Oh no, Santa is a hundred percent real," and he's constantly trying to convince his kids that Santa exists. This is a man that kept a cookie for thirty fucking years so that he could DNA test it with Santa's wait, wait, DNA. wait, wait. I don't think I'm snoring enough coke. Uh... Listeners, do you remember the cookie? <laughs> Good. Remove it from your memory. It's pointless. Because it's not. It <laughs> it's 
<laughs> fucking worth. Well, it does. About it. That they do make a very very awkward like DNA oh, test after God, they I sent Santa's it. DNA to Twenty Three and Me, and yes. that got sent to the Illuminati. I'm sure. And <laughs> fucking Christ. This movie. Um, the they send it. The mom is a medical technician, and they, yeah. they the mom gets the kid sends it with the mom, and it shows up right at the end of the movie, and she tests the cookie, and it comes back with DNA from all races. Yeah, Santa because that's how race. that yeah. works. Because Ed yeah. Asner definitely looks like yeah. he's all yeah. races. Yeah, he doesn't see color, as you said. Santa doesn't yeah. see color. Yeah, they said that. <laughs> Just the Japanese. Yeah, he hates the oh. Japanese for oh sure. Oh my god. This is, I just hate everything about this. I'm so broken as a person. Okay, okay. So, I like need no. a break. I just can't do it. No, no. We, we will movie. fucking finish this together. So they, they go across the border and they get stopped by the Russians finally. They get stopped so as by the, the Russians. The Russians own the North Pole. As the Russians own the North Pole, oh, not Christ. the Canadians of the Finnish, which they make sure. And you know, we talk about the geopolitical reasons for that. Um, and then they as do. Talking, and the kid, well, like, the way that they know he's, about he's geopolitical Putin. reasons. He's yes, Putin. the kid looks up on his phone and he's got a picture of Putin on it. He's, he's, he's just like, no, Putin. he's right, Dad. They own the North Pole. Well, actually, yeah, Canada right, and Finland yeah. are also fighting against it, but you know. Yeah, and, and like, like that's like, shut up, you little talk. shit. God. <laughs> so God, after the, the geopolitical Russians owning the North shit, um, the Russians uh. cut their brake line. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, then, and then they're driving along. They get to an end of the road, which is on a cliff, and the whole scene slows down. It gets and quiet. Dad's screaming like, "Oh my god, my brakes!" Everybody's are screaming, and, like on and then Silent Night plays. Yes. Silent night. Ah! They break through <laughs> the barriers and fall off the cliff. Night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just and they show this car kind of, like flipping down this cliff and yeah, it's everything, like flipping in circles and hitting the side. You're like, oh shit! Oh, but they're fine. The elf, and- the elf could have saved them at any time, but wanted to scare the fucking shit out of them because they put him in a glove box. <laughs> yep, to hide him from the border guard. So he. The elf just is like, oh, no, wait, see, look what happens. And suddenly, like, the car stops yeah. flipping, and they're just, like, I mean, by yeah. the way, this is not a car. This is the worst CGI It's a toy, CG garbage, yeah. It's not a toy. It's not even a toy. It's much worse yeah. than that. But it, like, flips back up and goes, and, like, warps upwards was, into, wait, was that a, like, being hold straight. Hold on. Did it just make a Wookiee noise? Yes. <laughs> Why did it make a Wookiee noise? I don't, I don't know. But it like just... <laughs> up and then why would it, it do that? Flies straight. Dude, I don't... Why does they... Okay, why five Dude, seconds I, from now, when they're at the North Pole in their car, I, standing in the void... I feel like I'm void, taking fucking crazy pills. <laughs> they just... When they're... Well, in five seconds after this, when they jump out of the car, and they're just standing in a black void with the northern lights against yeah. the green screen... And oh, then the, that the snowman? The, the CGI snowman I shows up for literally snowman. five seconds and just be like, hey, who are you talking about as a snowman, pal? And like do weird eyebrows at him. It looks like a kid made it in MS Paint. It's yes. so bad. And it has like, okay, so we haven't talked about how obnoxious all of the voices in this are, right? Yes, they're like absolutely all the elves terrible. have chipmunk voices. All of like the CGI'd snowman has this like, oh hey kids, I'm the snowman. They, they got their friend to do that voice, it's, and but the that's animation. the voice. That's what he does. He does yeah. that. It's that obnoxious, and it's like, what are you Can, doing? I I'm surprised that fucking snowman actually put their name on this goddamn movie. They they put I'd they were the animator the and the voice. And they're like, yeah, put me in the credits. I want everybody to know who I am. And you know what? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I have a question Fuck for you, boy. You. Boy, I, yeah. I have a quick quick question. Does this snowman uh voice actor, is he a worse voice actor or a worse animator? Yes. <laughs> Which of those two things is he worse at voice? No, the answer is Which yes. Which of those is his job? He's worse at both in equal <laughs> amounts. 
<laughs> so anyway, now we need to have a scene where Klepto Kyle talks about his burn ward scars. Yeah. Uh, to a small child for two minutes. Well, she stares at him with the most yeah. horrific look on her face. Because he's yeah. actually telling her this in real life. And this child actor, I'm sure, was just like, holy shit, why is he telling me this? And like, yeah, she third has degree that burns, the 70% of the body. They got an actual actor with burn yes. scars all over his arms. And they yes. just fucking exploited the shit out of him to get yep. video footage of him showing off his arms. And... And that scene yeah. was specifically to show that, and I, oh, I hate it. It feels gross. It feels gross. Ed Asner, you fucking asshole! <laughs> How dare your you, fault. Ed Asner? This is He's your an executive fault. producer on this, to be fair. So it is at least partially his fault. <sighs> okay, so let's go back to Toy Dad for a second. Ugh. So Toy Dad was working on a shitty little dodo plushie. Yeah, we need to get to um, this part. Which, which is also, apparently, the director's own creation, and he's selling a fucking book on Amazon. For. Yeah, this is what I was um, going to say. This that's is gross. Where, this is the self-insert toy dad. So when we said that there's, like, oh, the stupid bitch mom that doesn't like dogs at all and didn't grow up with animals and thinks that they're all gross yeah. and awful, hey, guess what? It's, it's just him. director insert. It's, it's him. him. It's him and his ex-wife or something. So, or like a date that he had. And so now he's like inserting himself. And oh yeah, by the way, this Mr. Dodo toy is the most brilliant, most amazing, best Christmas toy that's ever been made by anyone. And the person that made it must be a super special genius. So anyway, Santa steals the idea for marketing and adds I an Amazon it. Echo to every single plushie so that they're always listening to your children and they can answer questions when they ask I them. I do love that Santa takes it and pays him an exposure. <laughs> yeah. Like, Santa's just like, oh, hmm, that's an interesting toy. I can make it a little bit better, though. It's missing something. Yeah. Puts an Amazon Echo in it, like you said, where it just answers questions like an Echo would. Oh. And then he just Do you fucking, remember, like, hold on, hold on. Do you remember that Santa stole the dog? <laughs> so he just isn't, they, isn't this a isn't this a good opportunity for Santa to give the dog back? Oh wait, wait. Boyks, yeah. I have a theory. Yeah. I've realized yeah. something. Kyle the kleptomaniac steals everything, right? Correct. Santa's stealing everything. Did Kyle yeah. steal Santa's identity? Is it the wrong Kyle? Has there been a Kyle switch that we missed? That could happen. <laughs> that could happen. Santa steals it everything too. Oh my god, we're on to something. <laughs> so Santa already gave the dog back to the mom, apparently. Yeah, the movie's uh, when the been family... over. The movie's been it, over the, for but... 60 minutes. Fuck this movie. Go ahead. So they, Anyways, they, yes. they, the family is in the toy shop, the workshop. They meet Santa finally. Uh, talk about the third degree burns on Kyle, which is fucking weird. And then... Santa's like, oh, I already gave your dog back. Why the fuck are you here? Uh, I guess I should give you some medals or something so you leave. So, so he has a bunch of good boy and good girl medals, and he gives one good boy and one good girl to each character in, in turn, gives Kyle a good boy and a bad boy medal, and makes him the bad boys and girls Santa to give coal to all the nasty kids, because he knows what Kyle wants to do. And it's he knows gross. Kyle's secret desires, which is to torture small children. Just to be an asshole to kids. Yeah. Santa knows. Yeah. Santa knows By the everything. Way, Here's I, the reward. I, I want to say, this movie pisses me off a lot. <laughs> but the one thing that really fucking pissed me off is they I made tell. good boy medals and did not give it they to the dog. They didn't give it Those to the fucking dog. Motherfuckers. And this dog is cute as shit, too. At the beginning of this movie, I was so excited yeah. because for the first 10, 15 minutes of this film, it is at least half dog. Like, dog There's is There's a everywhere. lot of dog. There's a lot of yeah. dog. Dog's all over the place. And it's cute as shit. This dog is amazing. This dog is really cute. It winks. Did you know that my only note is dog That's wink? your only note. it's the only thing that matters. The dog winks. <laughs> the dog's fucking great. And they don't give the dog a medal? They don't give a dog a good boy medal? Fuck you. Fuck you, movie. 
Fuck you, Brian My- Michael Stotler, whatever your name is, Stotler. <laughs> Fuck you, man. So, Don't you know that the Kai Ken are a revered dog in Japan? They're a tiger dog. <laughs> so, so Santa does like a four minute lecture about global warming. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Adam, that is not a joke, by the way. That. As they are sitting there, Santa's like, "All right, well, there's all your medals. You can go home." And then the room shakes, and yeah. he goes, "Oh, the tremors!" And they go, "What?" And he goes, "Well, global warming's happening." And then, and he just oh. goes into this lecture that you need to stop can... global warming. Which, listen, we do, but the fuck? Okay, <laughs> okay the... but can you imagine if he said the tremors and then like, Kevin Bacon walked in the <laughs> door and and he's like. Oh shit! <laughs> oh god damn it, we're stuck on the. They can detect Grab us through the ice. Grabbing out of the crowd. Oh, that would've been so good. Ah, uh, we need to this write movie that movie. Would be way smart. We, 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 we could write might, graboids on the North Pole. We would oh, write a, a good much movie. better movie than this. Is what it is. So after oh. the global warming bullshit, there's some other post bullshit where they tie the dog up with a chain so he can't get stolen by Santa. Yeah. And then Santa steals a fucking cat. At the end of the That's movie, perpetuating yes. his klepto bullshit. He steals a green screen cat, is what he does. Oh, it's a green screen cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That cat was not in that scene. That cat was not in that scene at all. That cat, okay, hey. it's an orange cat that's blue. Because they're so bad at lighting for green yes. screen. They can only light people as blue whenever they have them on a green screen. You know what? I and I don't mean like a little blue. I mean like they look like yeah. fucking Oompa Loompas. It's bad. Cam, I have good news. I think we're done, we're done talking about this fucking movie. We're done movie. talking about the fucking movie. Oh, uh, Jesus there's Christ. There's so much that we... Well, I, I want to talk about so much besides this movie in a way. Like, I want to talk about this director a little bit. This is Oliver Daly 2.0. It has this to This guy, be. this fucking guy, he wrote, like, making movies for dummies? Yeah. Like, no. And how to shoot movies on your cell phone? Like, he's, he's the... He's the biggest scam artist sham I've ever seen. He wrote another book called Smartphone Movie Maker. That the title of it is Smartphone Movie Maker: The Essential Guide for Shooting Movies on Your Smartphone Includes Big Screen Projector. Um, I can write this movie right now for you. Here, let me do it. Okay, so Smartphone Movie Maker: The Essential Guide to Shooting Movies for Your Smartphone. Everybody, follow along with me. Pick up your smartphone. Now, smash it on the ground and buy yourself a fucking camera, you (laughs) dolt. Don't fucking shoot your goddamn movie on a smartphone. It looks like goddamn ass. I'm I'm a professional photographer. Don't do this fucking shit. Your phones fucking suck. I don't care how many megapixels it has. It's goddamn ass. And you can see it in this movie. This movie looks like shit. Don't do this garbage. Fuck you. So Thank should, you. So what are we writing That's the dog? That's the end of the movie. What are, we, what are we writing the dog? I think the dog was cute for how very little it was in. I'm... Like, like an 11 out of 10? A good boy I out of 10? Rate, a good boy out of 10. I want to rate this dog an Elphis out of Waldo Elphis. Elphis? <laughs> I don't, fucking Christ. I don't know. I need more Elphis in my life. No, I... Okay... The dog leaves the movie, though. Can I yeah. rate the do- movie dog for not being in the movie? I'm going to rate it an out of movie out of 10. It's not in this film. This dog does not actually appear in this film. It's I, a fucking bait and switch. I know where Waldo this is, the is in this bait movie, and movie. But not the dog. <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm so mad for this movie. Because early on, I had a moment where I said to you, I'm like, you know... This movie's a little bit boring so far, and it looks like it's shot awful. Like, yeah. one of the things about... Hey, here's the thing about shooting film with your smartphone. You have FPS rate drops. We have the same problem again, where any fast scene is, like, going in three frames per second and blurry as shit. Anyways. But I was like, you know, they can't frame a shot. The kids are obnoxious. But at least this dog is smart as hell, and they're putting the dog in all over the place, so I can at least enjoy that. And two minutes later, they took the dog out of the goddamn film and it's never to be seen again. And I cannot forgive them for that. I am so mad. That is the worst crime they did. It's a horrible bait. It's thing. awful. It sucks. I would just like to end on the note that I am not very proud of Eric Roberts. And he can do better. Oh my. 
Eric Roberts needs to he go should not have been in this movie. And say no. Yeah, you need to say no. Ed Asner times. also should have said no. Ed Asner, funded this Ed thing, Asner, so fuck 100 Ed Asner. sort of the fuck you, Ed Asner. Hey, hey, Ed Asner deserves hey, this. Ed Asner, fuck you. <laughs> All right, that's, well, that's anybody, our episode. Anyways, thanks, yeah. everybody, for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching Rough Cuts. Um, I do really appreciate everybody who uh, like shouts us out on social media and shares us out. I know that we always talk about this at the end, but it does make a big difference. Like, we can't do this without uh, everybody kind of sharing this out, or at least it would it would make this a lot harder to go through if nobody was actually listening. The people who are listening and follow along with us and share it out is something that we're incredibly proud of and it, it means the world to us. It's, it's a big deal. Um, by the way, since we never introduce ourselves at the start of these, we probably should. I'm Ilion and he's Boix. Hi Boix. Hello. <laughs> so that we can have people identify us by our voices. I realize that we don't do that. We are not professional podcasters. No. <laughs> no. Oh, but, to be fair, but, we were extremely mad at the we beginning were, of this. I was so mad at this fucking movie, man. This movie, I am, I'm gonna like have a lie down after this. Like, I need to angry nap after this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this movie made me. I, I wasn't mad at first until you started talking about it more and how angry you were. And the more that you were angry about this movie, I was like, yeah, you know what? Fuck this movie. Yeah, you know what? I am Fuck. mad. <laughs> I am mad at this film. Actually. This movie did make me angry. It was incredibly offensive. But yeah, uh, we like I said, we, it does mean a lot to us. I know that there's a lot of people that uh, suggest movies and things to us, and it, it means a, a big deal to us. Like, it's no joke. The only reason why we keep doing this is that people actually care to, you know, retweet this and watch it and pay attention to it. Like, Baron Ninja, who is just retweeting us today and, and mentioning out our last episode. Uh, Hi, guy. It, it means a lot. So Thank you. All right. In any case, we will see you after the new year. Uh, this will be our last podcast of this year, I'm pretty sure, uh, unless we have something very strange happen. But we will be uh, ending season one, I guess, of Rough Cuts, because this is our first year. But that You're doesn't right. mean we're going on hiatus. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Have a wonderful new year. And we will see you later i would like to apologize <laughs> i i wanted to watch that one because i'm like oh this looks terrible and you know what <laughs> i was, was right <laughs>